Well, how do you do, buckaroos? If you can hear the music, I don't own the rights to anything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Alice Cooper called Ethel just finished. Uh, sh uh, now, uh, drop on me from James Hunter. That's how eclectic my mix is. I love my mix, man. I'm a, I'm a genius, man. <laughs> Anyways, hey, so I just found this. Uh, well, I found it over the weekend. We're in St. Louis. David Nicholson Reserve Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Extra aged for smoother, more full-bodied flavor. This fine bourbon offers a distinct spicy taste with the character and quality that you expect from the David Nicholson brand. Now, I've never heard of the David Nicholson brand before. So, quite frankly, I'm not expecting anything. <laughs> Whoo, 100 proof, 50% alcohol, uh, distilled and aged in Kentucky. Here's where it gets a little tricky, though. Bottled by David Nicholson Distillery, St. Louis Mo. So, it's basically the whiskey version of a contract brew. <laughs> Anyway, from their website, an extra age ride, whatever the hell that means, right? Uh, means probably more than three years old. Uh, could be as much as eight, but who knows? It's, uh, who knows? It's probably a blend of uh, three to eight-year-old bourbons, but I'm just guessing here. An extra aged bourbon that provides full-bodied flavor and distinct spicy taste. Notes of honey and vanilla and smoky undertones uh, on the nose. The palate is woody. Smoky tones you'd expect, followed by an exceptionally smooth finish with undertones of oak and spice. I apologize, my nose is killing me. So I'm going to actually, I, I got some neat and rocks. But I'm going to do the nose on the neat, then set it down and go straight to the rocks here. Nose, notes of honey, vanilla, smoky undertones. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, certainly honey, vanilla. Um, I, I don't know, I... I it, it, it's it's smoky. I would say more than undertones on the smoky. Certainly get some oak and hint of spice as well on the nose. You might even find some dark fruit notes in there. Who knows? Okay, now going straight to the rocks. I don't want to get too much water in this, but it's a hundred proof bourbon, so I wasn't really scared about putting it on ice, if you know what I mean. Those have honey, vanilla, smoky undertones. So, uh, well, with some water, with, with some ice in it, getting it cold, I'm getting a lot of honey and vanilla uh, with with the smoky vanilla undertones that they suggest. I, the point I was trying to make is it felt smokier and neat. Mm. Aerosmith, big tennis record. When I used to, there was a period of time, I don't know, about a decade or so ago, that I used to do a lot of karaoke. And I would karaoke the hell out of this. I, <laughs> I got to know this one one dude that always did his karaoke show. And I walk in there, and, and I wouldn't even get to pick my song. He just played, put this out for me. The second I walked in, he called me up there, and I'd have to do this one first, because he just loved the way I did it. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know that I did it that well, but I did it... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? It was very showful, let's just say. <laughs> Anyways. I gave my love a little pinch. She said, no, stop that jiving. And now whip out your big 10-inch record of a band that plays the blues. A band that plays the blues. Anyways, I digress. Back to the whiskey. Record of my favorite blues. <laughs> But I digress. So palate, according to them, the, of course it's theirs, I'm sure they're right. The woody, smoky tones you expect, followed by an exceptionally smooth finish with undertones of oak and mild spice. Yeah, I would go with that. I, I might add a little bit, but let's have another drink and see. Yeah, it is very woody, uh, smoky tones. Yeah, sure enough. Followed by exceptionally smooth finish. Yeah, you know what? Uh, this is a hundred proof whiskey. It is rather easy to drink. Oak and mild spice. Yeah, you do get a hint of spice at the end. 
I'm, I'm gonna put a finer point on it and say very light cinnamon. Uh, you're gonna find some vanilla in there on the flavor as well. I'm gonna say light caramel, not necessarily light in flavor, but a light caramel. You have light dark caramels, it's a lighter caramel. A little more buttery, less brown sugar burnt kind of thing. Are you following me? Uh, that's kind of what I'm getting here. Uh, you may get some other things as well, too. I mean, I almost feel like I got just a, the slightest hint of apple there. The bottom line for me is we all taste things differently. And I get frustrated with folks. And somebody tastes them and says, no, you're wrong. Well, you're not necessarily wrong. If that's how you feel it, that's how you feel it. How can somebody be wrong if that's how they feel it? You know what I mean? Uh, you know. That's how you feel it. That's how you feel it. You know, we shouldn't tell people they're wrong. Uh, you know, well, we can't tell people they're wrong. I'm not saying I'm being, being totally PC. I'm just saying, you know, if somebody tastes something a certain way, they're not necessarily wrong. Maybe they're just not educated enough. But there are certain flavors you, you can only taste what you know. If you don't know flavors, you're not going to see it that way. A lot, lot of, lot of uh, whiskeys will impart dark fruits, uh, date fig, for instance. If you don't eat fig on a regular basis, you might not, uh, you know, in interpret what you're tasting as fig. You might say something else. So you say whatever you taste. And someone says, no, you're wrong. You should get fig. Well, I don't know what fig is, he says. <laughs> so they're not wrong for feeling it different. They don't, you know, you equate what you know. It's not bad on the rocks, I'll be honest with you. However, uh, I, I think I am losing a lot of its nuances on the rocks. So I'm going to set that down. Let me put my, put my prop to the side a little bit there. See, now that I've, I've, I've had that and I'm going back to this, I'm, it says notes of honey and vanilla, smoky undertones. Yeah, I'm feeling much more sugars on the nose than I noticed initially, to be honest with you. Honey vanilla, sure. I almost feel like a light brown sugar as well on the nose. Because I'm getting the slightest bit of molasses with the sugar. Damn, that's good. That's that's really that, that's a uh, oh I almost dropped an F bomb. <laughs> oh Tom, you almost did it. Yeah, I mean it's freaking good, man. Oh, very bad. Yeah, you know I do. I think it's the most nuanced whiskey I've ever had. Uh, will I purchase it again? Um, no, I don't think it's the most nuanced whiskey I've ever had. Will I purchase it again? I might. It really isn't bad. Uh, and I'll let you know as I get closer to the end of the bottle. Uh, we'll do that tonight. That'll be a little ways away. <laughs> but I was curious. I was in St. Louis. It says St. Louis. I've never really given it a whirl. But, but you do see a lot of whiskeys like this that are distilled somewhere else. But they have a label from, you know. And it, it, it's basically, a, you know, a, a contract group. Co contract whiskey. You know. In some cases, it's it's someone saying this is my this is my recipe. You make it this way. In other cases, it's just a distiller picking out specific barrels and saying I'm, I'm going to put I'm going to buy these and put my label on them. I've seen both happen. But I mean, extra age. I don't know how long it's been aged. I'm gonna guess. I said. I think I said earlier a blend of three to eight year olds. I'm gonna say it's probably a minimum of four. It may be closer to six, but I'm not feeling eight. Now that I've had a little more of it. But I mean, it is a hundred proof whiskey, and I'm not finding it harsh or hard to drink in any way. Now I got some Otis Redding down in the valley. <laughs> Anyways, I digress. Oh, biscuits and gravy. <laughs> now I really digress. 
Oh, uh, wow. Um, so anyways, yeah. I am. Who are you? Who cares? This doesn't make you feel good after a while. Put an ounce and a half there, ounce and a half here. I'm feeling rather peachy about myself at this particular moment. I am trying to whiskey whisper as we speak. Whiskey evangelist, prolific whiskey drinker, purveyor wisdom man. Mm. All right, good guy. You all, I'm going to move my prop. Uh, you all have a good one.